Webheads, what does October 14, 2020 mean? Absolutely nothing, except that it's new comic book day. Hey, all my webheads out there, welcome back to Comic Book Corner 2.0. And fans, I am your host, Mike Spider Slayer, getting ready to bring you the top 10 most anticipated comic books. Fans, this is for October 14th, 2020. It's never too early to start that poll list for next week. And hopefully, this list helps you make decisions on what comic books to buy. And fans, at any time, if you want to show that extra support towards the channel, just go ahead and hit that join button right there on my home screen as it helps supports the channel and takes it that extra mile and as always i thank you for your support and i thank all of you guys for watching and taking the time to comment and all that great stuff so guys let's kick off this week's top 10 most anticipated with the hot seat book that's right guys this week's hot seat book goes to the doomed and the damned issue one from dc comics now this is a horror book that tells uh, a different a whole bunch of different scary stories and i'm um, kind of like you know do i really need this book is it you know necessary for me to have but to get into the spirit of halloween this could be a fun read now i think this book is man Man, I don't remember if this book is like 10 bucks or six bucks, something of that nature, but it looks kind of creepy. It can't be all that scary or gory because remember, it's done by DC Comics and you can only show so much, but it could be an interesting read. It's got a cool looking cover. I might check it out. We'll see what happens. All right, so moving on to number 10. This one goes to Dark Knight's Death Metal. This is issue four. Now, you might be like, Mike, why is this kind of low on your list? Well, it's still in my top 10. I get a lot of books every single week. So again, if it's my number 10 most anticipated, it's still okay. Nevertheless, this event has kind of lost its punch for me. I kind of enjoyed it when it was coming out more frequently, and now the main book has taken a little bit of a break, and we've gotten all these other books around it, and I haven't been reading all of those tie-in books. I've read a couple of them, but I just like the last Metal series, I'm kind of getting a little bored of it. Now, when this issue comes out, this could reignite that and I could, you know, gain my interest and this could jump up the list once again. But it's an interesting story. Uh, I want to see what happens with the, the Batman Manhattan who laughs now and, and everything else that happens with our heroes. But again, with a lot of the DC stuff, when it comes to crisis and, and multi-universes, and, and for me, it's a little bit convoluted because... I'm not rich in that history of DC Comics. I've only been reading since the New 52. But it's still an interesting read. Don't get me wrong. I'm still looking forward to it. Uh, this book is 32 pages and it's $5. All right, next, coming in at number nine, and this is the first time I'm jumping on this book in a long time because it's got a new creative team. This is The Flash. This is issue 763. This is kind of cool um, as we get to see maybe uh, we get to see the trickster in this particular issue, which is kind of cool. And I guess it's going to be, mis um, I guess, uh, messing with um, maybe uh, Barry Allen's um, origin or whatnot. I, I don't know 100% what the story is going to be about. But again, if you're looking to jump on board with Flash for the first time in a while and you haven't read the last run, I think this is the time to do it, right? So this is it. Flash, 763, 32 pages, $4. I know a lot of you guys are Flash fans out there. All right, next. Coming in at number eight, this has been a pretty good series. This also kicks off, I think, a new story arc, and this is uh, Darth Vader issue six. No, it's not a new story arc. This continues it. It's called Dark Heart of the Sith. This is part six. So 
obviously Darth Vader, if you've read the series, has been going after who killed Padme, okay? And there was a lot of things that happened in the last issue and through this story as well. Well, as Darth Vader has had to report back to Emperor Palpatine, it looks like Palpatine is not happy about where he is in the dark side of things, and he's going to have to reignite that fear in his soul to get angry again and to be more, I guess, to be strong with the dark side. So I'm looking forward to that to those interactions between Darth Vader and Emperor Palpatine. They're always really well done. This book takes place between Empire and, and Return of the Jedi, which makes an interesting timeline because these are stories that you never saw between those two main movies. So I'm, again, looking forward to this one. 28 pages, $4. All right, coming in at number seven, this one goes to Detective Comics issue 1028. Um, this is a new story arc as well as we have uh, completed the Joker War at this point. And so we're, if this is a time to jump on Detective Comics, this is it as well. Um, and it just has to do with the horseman that rides. I don't know too much about it, but again, it's a Batman book. If you don't like the main Batman book, you always have Detective Comics to fall on. And uh, I've been reading them both as of late. So I'm going to check this story arc out. 32 pages, $4. All right, next, coming in at number six, another new story arc. This is Captain Marvel issue 22. Um, it says it's a brave new world and the start of a brand new arc. So when it comes to uh, Kelly Thompson, she's been writing Captain Marvel, and I think she's been doing a great job. And I think she wrote one of the best tie-ins when it came to Empire. We got to see Carol Danvers as she became Ronin, uh, or the accuser, and uh, she had a half-sister. So there's a lot of things there, a lot of family dynamic. And now that Empire is over, we're going to see what happens with our character going forward. So, so far, this run has been great. She also introduced Star as well and Star had a spin-off series she holds the um, Soul Stone so again there's a lot of little things that Kelly Thompson is putting out there for its readers I give her a lot of credit and uh, we'll see where this new story art goes 28 pages four dollars guys all right, so coming in in the top five, this one goes to Seven Secrets issue three this is Tom Taylor's independent book about uh, a bunch of characters who hold this secret suitcases where they have these secrets inside of them. There's a handler and there's a holder and one uh, a group had a particular baby that does a narration in the uh, in the book as well. And then in the last issue, you found something out that is huge that I don't want to spoil in the book. You have to read it for yourself. Really solid book. Characterization in this book. Artwork is good. Just everything about it is awesome. And I can't wait as it goes down the line because I think these characters, you're going to get really invested in these characters really soon. So check out Seven Secrets, Issue 3, Webheads. All right, next, coming in at number four. This one goes to Red Mother. This is Issue 9. Um, really great book. It's creepy. We wind up seeing Daisy, who's our main character, who has gotten mugged. Her boyfriend was killed. She's moved, I think, to the UK to take on this job as she solves puzzles and creates these types of things, you know, that, that people have to solve. And she's been solving things for this guy. And uh, it's been a really interesting take. She thinks she's living a normal life, trying to get beyond this particular uh, traumatic experience that she's dealt with. But she still sees these visions. And uh, whether these visions are starting to get worse again, it's still yet to be determined. But every time she gets into a relationship, something bad really seems to happen. So we'll see what happens with issue nine. Red Mother is great. I definitely suggest it, guys, if you're looking for a different book. This is done by Boom Studios, 32 pages, $4. All 
All right, next, moving on to number three. Guys, this is the amazing Spider-Man. I guess we just had issue, what, 850? And now that we move on from the normal numbering from number 49, now we go on to 50. So this is another way to have another milestone book. Really tricky there, Marvel, right? Two milestone books within two weeks. So this one is 52 pages. This is $6, reaching another landmark. Mark. And it just looks like that Spider-Man obviously is dealing with Green Goblin and all that stuff. It looks like Kindred might make his appearance in this particular issue, but hasn't he been slowly making his appearance? Like, haven't we seen him in every single book pretty much, but nothing has really happened? So we're going to see what happens here. Uh, I'm going to keep my fingers crossed that we get some uh, progression when it comes to that character or that villain, because if not, dude, totally, I'm going to be really pissed off when it comes to this, because I am tired of not knowing who Kindred is. So we'll see what happens. Again, 52 pages for uh, six dollars guys all right so coming in at number two this is the immortal hulk issue 38 i think the immortal hulk has been great uh we have the leader that has made his return in the book you know this is the arch enemy of hulk in general We've been getting a bunch of one shots as well. Uh, we've had that most recent one the, by done, done by Jeff Lemire. We also have uh, the other one that was done with Immortal She-Hulk by Al Ewing as well. And uh, this book has been great. Uh, I can't wait to see what happens with it going forward. And yeah, I just think like all heck is going to hit the fan when it comes to this book it's a great read the artwork is phenomenal it's gory it's scary anybody that's been reading immortal hulk knows what i'm talking about again it's going to end in october of next year so we got about 12 more issues to go so there you have it immortal hulk issue 38 and last but not least, coming in at number one, uh, we have the X of Swords. That's right, guys. We have the next chapters in there. I think we got seven, eight, and nine. I'm, I'm not even sure what chapter we're on at this point. But uh, yeah, X of Swords has been really great. So we got, it seems like we're getting three chapters every single week. And after reading chapter two, uh, I have been really invested in this story. I thought the setup issue, the X of Swords creation was okay. Uh, but when I read issue two and we got to see the, uh, you know, what happened with Rock Slide and what Polaris is dealing with and how our heroes have to get these swords to do this battle in the future against other world, I think is phenomenally done. And I can't wait to read these next few chapters. So yeah, really looking forward to it here. Again, I think this is six, seven, and eight. Because this past week we got we're getting three, four, and five. I don't know, but I have the I have the the images here for you guys to see. Um, again, I'm looking forward to it. X of Swords has been great. Next week I could change my mind after reading these three, and it could be number ten on my list. But after reading this second chapter, man, I I was on board with it, and I don't find it cheesy at all. So guys, there you have it. There are my top ten most anticipated comics of the week. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. I'm really interested to see what your guys' list is. And as always, fans, if you like what you see right here, go ahead and click on this video. I'm going to leave that for you there. And until next time, guys, thank you so much for watching Comic Book Corner 2.0. And this is Mike Spider signing off. Take care, guys. Bye.